Hello and welcome. We'll be talking about formation of a cone from the sector of a circle. I'm Uncle Ed. I want you to understand that there is a relationship that exists between the sector of a circle that we earlier talked about and a cone. In other words, a cone can be formed from a sector. So you can practically cut out a sector from a piece of paper and fold it, allowing both edges, both end of the arc, to touch. What we will have in the end is a cone. Now, when the cone is formed, like we have in a diagram here, the edges of the sector AB meet at point X. Then the arc of the sector becomes the circular base of the cone. Also note that the original radius, capital letter R, of the sector becomes the slant edge or slant height. So you have to do an imaginative analysis here. So you must all note this. In our cone diagram, we have alpha, alpha as the vertical angle of the cone, the vertical angle of the cone. It is very important that you note all this. So here are the mathematical relationships between the sector and the cone. Note, the length of arc of the sector is the same thing as the circumference of base of cone. In other words, when you form your cone, the length of the arc of the sector is equal to the circumference of the circular base of the cone. So in mathematical terms, that is theta over 360 multiplied by 2 pi r, which is the length of arc, equal to 2 pi r. So by the time we cancel out 2 pi on both sides, on both sides of the equation, we're going to be left with theta r over 360 on the left hand side equals r. Hence, the base radius of the new cone formed from the sector becomes theta r over 360 where capital R is the radius of the original sector. Also note that the height of the new cone is gotten using Pythagoras' theorem. Therefore, from a diagram of the cone, we have that h squared, which is the height of the cone, is given us L squared minus R squared. Therefore, h is going to be the square root of l squared minus r squared. But in this case, else l can also l is actually capital R, that is the radius of the sector. But now in this case, it is now the height or the slant height of the cone. So that is why we have the square root of capital R squared minus small r squared. If we expand that, we're given that in the first instance that r is equal to theta r over 360. So when we substitute that into this equation, we're going to have the square root of r squared minus theta r over 360 or squared. So that is the formula for the height of a cone. In the case that you're giving an exercise, you can use this formula. Just simply apply it and substitute the values. An example quickly. The sector of a circle of radius 7 cm subtending an angle 210 degrees at the center of the circle is used to form a cone. Calculate the base radius, height of the cone, total surface area of the cone and the volume of the cone. So we get right away to it. It's very simple. All we do, bring out the formula and substitute the values. We have radius as 7 cm and theta as 210 degrees. So for the base radius, r, that small letter r, equals theta r over 360. So where we have theta, we simply impute 210 degrees multiplied by 7 over 360 degrees. 
when you calculate that using your calculator the base radius small letter r is going to be 4.06 cm the height of cone h is giving us the square root of capital letter r minus bracket open theta capital letter r over 360 bracket close or square is that clear so substitute the values as usual and solve your way down through to the end when you do that we would have the square root of 32 minus 33 which gives us 5.69 cm the volume of a cone is giving us pi r squared h over 3 or 1 over 3 multiplied by pi r squared h substituting the values of pi r and h we have pi to be 22 over 7 r to be 7 and h to be 5.69 as gotten from our previous solving from our previous step so when you punch it out and do the math very well we would have volume of cone as 99.23 cm please ensure to take your time out and do the math on your own so that you would understand the processes very well and lastly total surface area the total surface area is giving us a subscript s to be equal to pi r open bracket r plus l close bracket where l equals capital letter r or big r as case may be so same as usual we substitute the values for pi r and l going through that carefully we would get total surface area of the cone as 142.05 cm I want to believe that you've been able to learn something from this exercise. So why not check out this exercise, solve it, putting every detail into it, ensure to submit your answers. I'll be waiting. Best of luck.